<laughs> Let's see. It was a win. It was a win. But uh, this is when I, sh I shot uh, <laughs> Mark Briggs. <laughs> had to get some work done. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so I, I, was, I, got, I had my laptop out. Right here. Uh, I don't know if it worked. Oh. But anyway, I had my laptop out. Watch the game here. So. It was a good win. A little scary. A little scary. Uh, because down the stretch, uh, I thought New Mexico had a chance to score a couple of times. But uh, so we kept the fans in their seats. We're going to screenshot that and see what's on the laptop to see. Oh, <laughs> dang. That wasn't smart. <laughs> you guys are smart. Somebody smart. will. Yeah, you, let me see. Oh, shit. I can't see it. <laughs> How are they bad? Uh, just. How's the health of the team kind of heading into Wednesday for you guys? Uh, it's pretty good. You know, Dorte's still uh, uh, a little banged up. He's uh, He did everything but contact today. Uh, Trey's still banged up. He didn't didn't do anything on the floor today. Uh, but other than that, it's it's pretty good. Yeah. Where, where just do you feel the, the spirit, the readiness of this team is? I, I, I think the spirit's there. I really do. I feel like the guys are ready to get the regular season going. You know, they, they've had a enough of preseason, enough of me on their behind for every little thing, uh, which I still will be, but uh, I think they're ready to play games that, that uh, count. Do you feel like that physicality you've been preaching was embraced in preseason? It's it's getting better. We, st we the, the exciting part about it is it's getting better. It's way better at this point this year than what it was last year. Hopefully it will translate to wins, uh, but uh, I'm excited about where we are, knowing where we could still go with it. You talked about the, the two guys that weren't full go at practice. How much does that change your opening night ideas and your rotations for opening night? Uh, you, well, you, know, you know, obviously uh, Trey was a part of our rotation last year, and and uh, he's going to have a good chance of being part of it this year. So if he's not playing, you know, we got to make some adjustments. And the reality of it is uh, Chris has done a heck of a job. As the preseason or training, as training camp has gone along, he's he's gotten better every time he stepped out on the floor, and and because of that, you know, he probably get a shot, whether it's starting or coming off the bench, I don't know, but um, he get a shot. But obviously, with him being hurt, especially if he doesn't have any contact before that first game, then he won't play. Have you seen Sasha making slow progress as well? Yeah, I, you know, I, I again, I think all of our guys have made progress. Uh, you know, it, some guys haven't made progress as quickly as others, but I, I think as a group we're trending in the right direction. Has it surprised you a little bit at all about that he's, I don't know, maybe just hadn't had that, that quite breakout game that, that maybe everyone's kind of hoping for, at least from a fan standpoint, they're, you know, they're pretty amped up for what he could do. Yeah, and, and, and I, you respect that and you love that from the fans, but I, you know, I've been through this before. Uh, back in the day, uh, it was a young man named Manu Ginobili right. who came over as a rookie at 26, 27, maybe even 28, so similar to Sasha. And uh, and he struggled at first, struggled to a point to where we actually, as a staff, took him out the lineup and set him down for a little bit because there's a lot of pressures that those types of players go through that we don't understand. They, you got pressures from people overseas thinking that, you should come to the NBA and right away be, you know, Magic Johnson or Larry Bird, and it just doesn't work that easy. It doesn't translate that easy. And you know, you, you talk to Sasha; he'll tell you he's still trying to feel and understand the game while getting his confidence to play at the highest level. So it's going to take some time, uh, but for where uh, where he is right now in the short amount of time, he's made some pretty good adjustments and With improvements. Whether it's the uh, the cuts that he's had, or you know, getting hot in that third quarter in the last game, just do you see like the outline of where he can be in maybe a month or two, or a couple of months? Yeah, you, you do. You see, and the neat part about it, and I said this earlier, is the biggest thing for me with him is to make sure his confidence doesn't waver. And and I, I said this earlier too is just the way he carries himself. I think he'll be okay in that area. And eventually his game will catch up to where he has a, a better feel of what he should be doing on the floor and how he can do it on the floor to be very effective in the NBA. Uh, but he and I have had a conversation, had to have conversations and, and, and he knows that I have confidence in him, but he also uh, knows that 
I understand it may take some time for him to process all that stuff, but I, like he had a pass today that I was like, whoa, you know, and some people might look at it and think, oh, that's, I, I might be able to do that, but no, no, it was a very difficult pass. I don't know how he saw his teammate on the weak side of the floor, and not only that, he got it there on time and on target, and so to, to, to be able to watch him grow in the different areas as the games go along, like you're saying, uh, even defensively, uh, is definitely a welcome sight. And, and, you know, the reality of it is it's a good problem to have when you have, uh, when you feel like you have depth, which I think we do right now. Uh, yeah, it makes my decision harder, but I would rather that than the other way. You mentioned Chris could potentially start still. Uh, I'm curious kind of what... But, uh, pro probably, probably not... Uh, probably not Tuesday though. Okay, yeah. so what's but the process like? Hey, if, he, if, he if he's can't. let's say he's healthy and ready to go, it seems like he, he may have a chance to start. What what's the process like for your, you and your staff in, in kind of deciding where to go with the starting lineup? I mean, it's you know, it's everything and above from watching film to uh, you know after games, even after practices, to watching in practice, to watching in games, and in you know even. Shooting, shooting drills, stuff like that. There's a lot that goes into it. The, the biggest thing for for us is, uh, you know, who can bring the physicality that we need to bring to the table defensively, while not necessarily hurting us offensively. Because, uh, you know, we we were the best in the history last year offensively. Um, I said this before. It's going to be hard to duplicate that. You know, we're going to try like heck to do it, uh, but we have a lot of room to grow defensively. And so we want to make a huge jump on that end of the floor. Even if we make a, a take a, sli a slightly a step or two backwards offensively, because having the historic the best offense in the, in the game, even if we drop the third, but we're able to somehow, some way, find our way in the top 15 or close to the top 10 defensively, I like, I like that direction. I like us heading that way. And so that's what we're looking for from all of our guys. And it's, it's my decision at the end of the day to utilize everything that we're able to from practices to the games, to shoot around, to shooting drills, to watching everything back on film to make that decision what of what fits best. Oh, sorry. What is the messaging to some of these guys that might be changing their roles out of the rotation? I mean, how do you keep spirits up? I understand everyone understands the business, it's basketball and everything, but it is going to change some things. Yeah, well, one of the things we're very high on is embracing your role. And we meet with each player periodically with their player development coach, with somebody from the front office, medical strength team, and then myself and a couple of other coaches. And we all work together on formulating or de uh, describing the individual's role. But they also have ownership in the process too. And so we want to hear from them. Because at the end of the day, when, when we define their role for this season, and it can change as the season goes along, but they have to say, not just in front of us, but we'll do it in front of the whole team. They'll have to say, hey, I embrace my role. You can do three things when it comes to that. You can reject it, which you don't want, because if you have people reject their roles, you're not having a team at all. I don't care what business you're in. You can accept it. The thing about accepting your role means that that person told me this is my role. So I'm going to accept it now. And I always feel if you accept something, you usually have one foot in, one foot out. When things are going good, okay, you're in. But when things are going bad, just because that person told me to do it, they don't really feel it. we got to get to a point where we're embracing our role. Where they could say, hey, I embraced my role. I was part of defining it, and so I embrace it, which means that anything that's going on, good or bad, I'm all in. And that's part of the contract that we signed that's on that wall over there. And if somebody goes a little sideways, hey, just pull them over and tell them, look, hey, your sign signature's on that contract. I told you, you didn't have to sign that if you weren't going to be in. And a lot of times, if a guy is going a little left, a little right, that will pull him back in. Coach, we, we in the media, we love to talk about the X factors of teams, if it's an individual player or whatever. But from a coaching standpoint, is there a guy on the team that you're like, you have to step up for us to get to the, you know, to a to a championship? Well, I think for us, it's a collective thing, you, you know, and, and I know that probably doesn't sit well with everybody, but it starts with Fox and Domas and Keegan to a certain degree. I mean, Keegan's creeping into that definition of, of quote-unquote, your big three. And so those guys have to come to play 
99.99% of the time. And, but everybody, that doesn't mean everybody else could take a day off or not bring it because we need to collectively bring it as a group because for us, you know, there might be other teams that, you know, you, 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 look, at, you look at Phoenix, you've got KD, you've got Bradley Bill, you've got Book, you know, you have some depth of guys that can go get you 30 basically every night. You know, and then you know, defensively, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, for us, we always have done it collectively. It's going to have to have to happen going forward for us collectively, knowing that, hey, Doma, Fox, you get paid the most money. Press is on you guys to start, and then it trickles down from there. Mike, sort of the follow-up to that is, if Keegan does start taking those steps. Does that allow you to do different things, like maybe at the shooting guard position where you go to a more defensive player because you know that Keegan can raise his, his scoring averages and some of the other things that he can do? Yeah, you know, anytime you have uh, another, you know, guy that you're, that you're like, okay, hey, this guy could be a uh, quote-unquote big three, uh, a true big three, and then it does give you flexibility, you know. But, it, again, we were a pretty good team last year. And uh, we had a lot of guys in new roles that they weren't in before. And all those guys stepped up. So they're going to have to continue to step up, having a guy that can not only step up, but separate himself from everybody else stepping up gives you a, the luxury to do a lot of things, for sure. Thanks, Sean.